Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you all how to make your own wire wrapped earrings including a do-it-yourself ear hook. So let's get started. Okay, so for this project I have two polymer clay flat backed undrilled beads that I've made or cabochons um, and I have separate tutorials on that but you could use any sized, any shaped undrilled bead for this. And you can have pre-made surgical steel uh, ear hooks or whatever material of your choice and some rubber ear backs, but I'm also going to be showing you how to make your own ear hooks. And then as far as tools go, I've got my wire snips, my flat nose, my round nose, and my nylon jaw pliers, and then I'm using 20 gauge para wire. And this is the silver plated silver. It's a copper core that's been silver plated and then covered with the enameling and so it's very durable holds up wonderfully and you know I really like it uh, and it's also great especially for making ear hooks and things out of because it is non-reactive because of that enameling so I am going to cut off about 14 inches of wire and I'm going to do that twice I'm overestimating because I don't want, to, I'd rather have a little bit of scrap left over than have not have enough wire. So now we have our two lengths. And I'm just going to set that off to the side. Now all the tools and materials will be listed down in the video description below. And if you follow those links and purchase anything through them, it actually greatly helps our company. So I really appreciate that. Man, those are so pretty. I wanted to get like a beetle wing effect and I think I... At least in the coloring. I think I did that. So the challenge here is going to be making mirror imaged, basically pendants, but for earrings. And so I'm going to try to make one and then make the other one match it like as close as possible, which is really difficult for me. So let's, let's go. <laughs> so I'm taking my wire and holding it at round about the center. And I'm going to use my flat nose pliers. And just grab and do a sharp 90 degree bend and now I'm going to measure with our cabochon and I want to come in about five millimeters from the tip of our of our stone and then so I'm gonna come in five millimeters from the bottom and I'm going to bend in the opposite direction Just like that and now for the sake of symmetry I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing on the other side so holding it you could use a permanent marker to mark you could use tape you could do whatever I just like kind of lining my pliers up and then bending you can actually hold them both at the same time as well and then bend up like that there are there are infinite amounts of routes that you could take to get to the same end result so just do what comes naturally to you and so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hold and if this one's going like this then I'm gonna be very careful to try to make sure that the other one is gonna be mirror imaged of that so I'm gonna take it and you can see how I'm lining it up on the center of the back again if you need to you could put a piece of masking tape uh, you could use just a little spot of E6000, or if you really want it to be like, you know, not having to grip it to hold it in place, you could even use some two-part epoxy. But I highly encourage you to practice just holding it in place. And I'm going to hold it here real close to the bend of the wire, and then bring this on around like that. And then I'm going to bring it and do that same thing on the other side. So I have our wire traveling away from myself. I'm just holding it and bending around. Now you can see I have it to where it's going to start crossing over this center wire. I, I usually, I don't know why, but I think of that as like the spine wire. Like it goes right down the center. And so we can come through. And I'm actually going to bend that out just a little ways. And bringing this wire, curving it gently to try to encourage it to go in the direction that I want. I'm going to start feeding this through. 
and I'm going to pinch quite firmly, not so much that you break your stone or scratch your stone, but just holding it and making sure that it starts cinching down at that bend. Okay, and this makes it very nice and stable. So how do we do that on the other side? <laughs> so it looks like we're coming through. Going to bend, bring it through, just like that. So we're just making a little loop around. And you can also use your pliers to hold and put a bend there. And that will encourage the wire to settle at that point. See how that worked? So that way, if you don't have as much hand strength or if your hands hurt after a long day of wire wrapping, you can kind of use your tools, make them work for you. Okay. And so we have this one traveling off in that direction. Mm, no, I'm going to bring them around just a little bit more. There we go. So see how that's happening? And again, this is just how I'm going about it. This is this tutorial is intended to uh, inspire your create your creativity to get you to kind of find your way about going this, you know, doing this project. So now I'm going to hold this one, and I want it to go mirror imaged. And honestly, at this point, you could like just like turn it, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know. The whole concept behind them being mirror imaged is no matter which way you turn it, they're still mirroring each other. So with that in mind, I'm going to hold this one, pinching it quite firmly, and just bringing it around. Now I'm going to hold this end, and bring it around. Now the 20 gauge wire, I really like Parawire's product because it is very soft and easy to work with. So if you're using um, sterling silver or something, I would definitely recommend going for a dead soft. Okay, so I'm going to pop this out just a bit. And how did we do this on the other side? <laughs> like I said, for me, that's the challenge. Okay, so my impulse was to go from around, and we're actually going to come from above and feed through. I really hope this is making sense to you guys, because I'm getting a little lost. <laughs> if you find yourself being like, what the heck? Just don't stress it. Just keep wrapping, keep having fun, and you'll find your way. Okay, just cinching that down. And so for this one, bringing it right through like that. I'm going to go ahead and do that bend to encourage. I really feel like that gives me a little bit, a slightly more predictable result. Because that's part of the difficulty, too, with wire wrapping is sometimes the wire is just going to do what it wants to do. Um, and we're just along for the ride, it feels like. Okay. So anything that you can do to be like, no, no, wire, we're doing this today. So there we go. Huzzah! They are mirror imaged of each other, more or less. See, whichever way I turn it, it's mirrored. You'd have to flip it over to get them to be symmetrical. Okay, so from here, now we get to start doing some decorative fancy stuff. I'm going to bring this one, you can see it's traveling up the top, down and around. And I'm going to bring this one down and around. Because I wanted to feature that nice little crossing in the front. And then I'm going to take this and just thread it through right there. But we'll wait to do that until the next step. So let's just focus on getting that nice crossing going on. Okay, so how do we, how do, we do that? <laughs> um, let's look at the back sides, maybe. Okay. So this one, I'm gonna... And you can kind of train the wire by pressing your finger against it, and it may work better with your thumb, just bringing it into a nice curve. There we go. So I'm going to bring this one down and around. That looks pretty nice. And I'm going to grab this one and grab this and bring it down and around. There we go. <laughs> Easier said than done, I'm sure. Haha! -ha! Well, that's looking pretty nice, too. 
again, more or less, they're sisters, not twins. Um, you can have them be as perfectly symmetrical as you like, or they can just be like a complete and total nightmare for anybody who has OCD. <laughs> so I think for this one, I'm going to bring this tail down and just poke it up through here. Because I want to start establishing what's going to be the top. And so I think that side is going to be the top. So for this one, that means we're going to come around, coming through the front, right through the front, yes, and pulling through. How's that look? Now on things like this, we can try to make it very symmetrical by making sure that these loops are the same size and shape. It already helped that our stones were more or less the same size and shape. So now on this end, and also that's another thing to look at, is this end's much more droopy downy and open than this one is. So let's try to make this one nice and droopy downy. Or, that's the technical term. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a professional, you guys, I promise. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it, I believe in you. Okay, so it's all droopy downy now. getting those shapes going and I'm going to bring this one through the same way just bringing it down and through do I want to do that no I don't want to do that I'm gonna bring this one in through the back side so in the back I mean the side that uh, if it's the front it's between the pendant and me if it's the back it's the pendant and out if that makes sense. So I'm going to come in through the back side and extend it out just a bit because we're going to be snipping here in a sec. So this one's coming around and then in through the back side. Now I wait to trim because I don't want to cut myself too short or too long and have the other one not be able to match. So again this is another step that you can take to try to give the illusion of symmetry. So I'm just going to line it up and then snip to pretty close to even. There we go. Same thing for up top here. Just lining them up. And you can see already this isn't symmetrical. Like, <laughs> oh well. You can do better than me, I am sure. Okay, so there we are. And now these guys that are on the bottom that are traveling in through the back side, I'm going to take our round nose pliers and grabbing as tip to the close of the as close to the tip of the pliers and as close to the tip of the wire as I can, I am going to start just spiraling inward. And if you're still new to wire wrapping or you're a little rusty at it, um, this little scrap that we snipped off, go ahead and practice your spirals on that. So it can be kind of difficult, but you can kind of get the hang of how to do it. Just practice, practice, practice makes lots of progress. Okay, so again, the side that's coming in from the back side, and I like to follow the natural curve. So if this wire is curving around this way, I'm going to continue that spiral around, but you could always do the option of having it hang down as well. So all of this, once we did that initial spine and loops on either end the beads held we just gotta make it look nice and figure out how to stick some ear hooks on it <laughs> okay and we come around and pretend like this one looks like the other one maybe it doesn't but that's okay <laughs> i don't know why i was like yeah i should show people how to make symmetrical things because never in my life have I made symmetrical things. <laughs> okay, so now for this one, I'm actually going to take this and spiral it in this way. So it was looping around. So instead of doing like how we did at the bottom and following the curve in, we're going to do the opposite and have it curve around out.
Now because these are earrings and I don't want it to get tangled into hair, I'm going to try really hard to have nice closed loops. And I'm just bringing this around like that. And I want it to sit very centered on our design with a little bit more of the opening of the loop up high. And again, that's going to be completely your own design preference. So again, I'm just demonstrating how I'm doing it. Coming around doing the same thing to the other side. I hope I cut these to be the same length. I don't remember. I think I did though. Okay. And if it's not quite perfectly in the center, just smush it over a bit. <laughs> Sneesh. The key I have found with wire is gentle but firm. Be patient with it, but let it know what you want it to do. You know, to be protecting will onto inanimate objects. Uh, so there we are. Those are some pretty... I don't want to say simplistic because if I had, if I were me when I was starting out and I was watching this tutorial and some lady called this simplistic, I'd be like, what do you mean? <laughs> but there's no weaving involved. You know, it's very highly customizable. You could have this be however you like. You could have it be however centered or however off centered or. And so from here, we could attach the ear hook just to that loop. But I'm going to show you using about three finger widths. Now let's do four of wire, cut twice. And this is something that you're going to want to file the end down because it's going through a pierced hole in the skin. You do not want any weird little pokey bits. Ooh, whoo. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can feel it in my teeth, I tell you what. And you just want it to be nice and round, no, uh, no jagged pointy bits. So do that on both sides. Okay, so from here, keeping in mind this is the end that's going to go into the piercing. You could use just anything that you have on hand that's round. I like to use my thingamajig, which is dusty, <laughs> and one of the big plugs for it. You could also use like a big knitting needle or a ring mandrel or you know whatever you might have. But I'm going to bring this around and make just a loop like that. And I'm going to do that with both. And so again, if you were using a ring mandrel, I would have just brought it around and around. It looks like a size 9, but again, you could do however. And I lost track of which end was which. Okay, that's my filed end. So the not filed end, I'm going to take my pliers and grab about there and bring it around like that. And this is one of my favorite ways to make ear hooks. So again, grabbing it, and you could use a permanent marker, like a Sharpie, to um, mark on your pliers where you're making the loop. That way, all your little loops will end up being the same size. Consistency is key. It doesn't really matter what size they are, as long as they both match. <laughs> so there we are. There are our little ear hooks, and you can take them and use your nylon jaw pliers to 
kind of surface harden them a little bit. Just a little bit of a squeeze. Doesn't seem like it would do much, but it does stiffen it up. And then also, if you wanted to go the extra mile, you could go ahead and hammer it with a jeweler's hammer, like on the nylon side. Um, if you're making these to sell, I wouldn't necessarily recommend hammering it flat, because most people are used to... These are... I can't recall if they're 20 or 21 gauge surgical steel. Um, and that's standard wire gauge, but, uh, the, most people will be used to around, you know, 20 or 21 gauge wire. Okay, so those are firmed up a little bit, and now I'm just going to open this loop by bending it that way. You don't want to uncurl the loop, you want it to just go, if, if that's... <laughs> gotcha. If that's the um, the ring, you just want it to open because then you can bring it back down and it's still a circle. So just like that right there. And then we're going to hook the earring on. And these could be large, but, you know, for some people's taste. But um, you're the artist here. You get to decide how big or small of a bead you want to use. Or you can make these, like, giant. <laughs> and also, this is just a modification from a pendant tutorial that I teach here on YouTube, too, so. And just like that, you guys, we have some very beautiful wire-wrapped earrings. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for hanging out with me for this video. I really hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. And if you want to connect with me on social media or Patreon or any of the other things that we do here at Back to Earth Creations, please check out all of my links down in the video description below. Uh, you can tag me on Instagram or post things to my Facebook wall if you would like to share your work with me. But be sure to link like your business page or anything like that that you would like for me to promote in case I share your picture with the world via my business page because I like to do that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, just if you want me to be able to share any of your links, be sure to uh, point me in the right direction. <laughs> so, um, also, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support what we do here uh, beyond just liking, sharing, and subscribing, please consider becoming a patron. Pledges start at just a dollar, and y'all do so much for us over there, enabling us to produce daily videos, as well as um, y'all participating in my monthly fairy house giveaways, my weekly material giveaways, and our Patreon craft crates, where you can actually get some handmade cabochons of your own if you're interested, as well as wire samples, chainmail rings, all sorts of stuff. So be sure to check that out. I also post quite a bit of stuff to the Patreon page that you don't even have to be a pledger to see. That way you can get a, a peek into the behind the scenes and different things of, uh, of what we're doing. So on that note though, I will see y'all in the next video. So until next time guys, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>